about it. Yeah. But this thing was completely, completely stunned me. We just stopped talking. We were having a conversation and we just stopped talking and to our left, probably about a good stone's throw down this gully was, it sounded like a person coughing, you know, like a big, someone clearing your throat, you know, like a, like that kind of noise. Mm. And we both stopped dead still because it was so, in the quiet, I mean, there was only crickets and frogs, but in this quiet, it really stuck out. We heard this noise, we stopped, stopped walking, and about the next second, uh, next breath later was this most unholy yell, scream thing that, that we've ever heard. It was so dark, you could, if you put your hand at the end of your arm, you couldn't see it. Mm. This noise kept going for as long as you could probably hold a breath. It was a long, drawn out scream, which faded off into, an, into another cough again. When I kind of, of, of had my eyes down, when I looked up, my mate's face was right nose to nose to me, and I'll never forget it, he said, all right, Harry, fuck up, what the fuck is that? That were his words exactly. <laughs> and I just stood there and went through everything in my head. There's, a, there's an owl called the, the Screaming Woman Owl. Um, it wasn't that. There was, uh, you know, I've heard dingoes, there was wombats, koalas fighting. No, no, it was none of that. It was something big um, and something really close. And because of the cough, the coughing noise that preceded the yell and after it, I've just gone, the only thing I can possibly think of that that would be is, and I didn't, I didn't even want to say it, because, um, you know, I just didn't, I said, well, you, what do you think it was? And he's like, I don't want to think about it. Um, we kept walking up the mountain, and we heard two huge cracks, like um, a fairly big tree being pushed over. We heard that, and then we tossed up whether or not to keep walking up towards the mountain, which is the way we're going, or walk the two, two or three hours back down the hill to our ten. And we both decided, fuck it, whatever's out there, if it's that big and it sounds like that, we're fucked anyway. Mm. Right, so let's have some balls and keep walking, which we did, until after about another hour, we thought, nah, bugger this, it's, it's the air around us was too, we knew we were being watched by something. Um, we just knew, and we said, bugger this, let's go back. When we when we got back down to our tent, the next morning we told a bloke what happened in the, one of the local shops, and he was so blasé, the bloke's gone, oh shit, mate, that's a yelling. Yeah, they've been up here all the time. A woman got her dog, her dog was stolen, ripped out of the ground by, off its chain by this thing, and stopped ran through her laundry and her clothesline and kept going. We've seen it's been here for years, blah, blah, blah. So, I mean, the, the locals there all know about it. Uh, we didn't go back up that mountain, put it that way. It was it was bloody incredible. Mm. And like I said, I know my bush noises. Um, and this was, the only way I could explain it was uh, half human, half, I don't know, bear or something. So it seemed to have a lot of volume in the sound. Like it wasn't like a little, a little ratty wall of it, you know what I mean? No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. This was, I mean, it was, like I said, it was a good stone throw down this gully and it was ear splitting. That every single thing in the, in the forest around us stopped making a noise. When this thing opened its mouth, there wasn't a cicada or a frog or a owl or a frog mouth or nothing moved at all for probably about 30 or 40 seconds. It, it just froze the entire area. Mm. Like it was like a lion roaring, you know? It was like this thing was the king of the jungle. Whatever it was, everything knew about it. And and it was, the, the, the very hairs on my head were standing on end. Mm. You know, it was, it was incredible. The weird thing is, Paul, that the second time that, that, that it happened, I was with the same guy. And because of that reason, I think that these things can sense who it wants to show itself to. Was it the same location or a different location? Oh, no, no. This yeah. is uh, the second time that we Jasper, which is oh, yeah. a, thousand, a thousand kilometres in the other direction. Mm. And this, this was the time that I was with the same guy but two other blokes. Uh, and this is the time I saw it. Not just heard it, but saw it as well. Again, summertime or winter, do you remember? Or? Uh, let me think. Uh, no, this is winter. This was winter, yeah. Really nice star 
Murray night. Where's the location? Uh, we Jasper. Yeah. It's um, if you go towards Yass. Yep. No Yass. Yeah. Get to Yass, you turn you turn inland from Yass. There's a sign that says um, Murrumbidgee River, Tumut Yass. Um, it's one of my old hunting grounds. And um, yeah, we got a blowout on the van, uh, so we uh, mate drove the van back to the campsite. And we got out of the van because there were sparks coming off the back wheel where we had the blowout. Mm. And we thought, we'd better walk behind it in case any little fires start, we can put them out. Basically, you know, pretty sensible thing to do. So we all piled out of the van and trudging along under the stars. The, the, it was a gravel road, so it was pretty easy to see. About what time of night was it? Uh, let me think. It was not long after dusk, actually, because when we got out of the van, there was still a bit of light left in the sky. And we thought, well, you know, we, we could still see the walk, but we underestimated the length of the walk to our campsite, and it was probably, well, it would have been probably sort of, you know, 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock by the time we got down the hill, but it was, you know, it was probably dark. Trudging along completely unarmed, but we left our firearms in the van, which um, in one way I'm sorry that I did, because I, I usually carry a very high-powered rifle with me up there. But we had a tiny, tiny little pen-light torch, the road was gravel, but white gravel, so you could see it, you know, it was it's not like we were going to wander off the road down a gully. There was the, one of the blokes that were with us is half Aboriginal as well, and he was he took a lot of fucking convincing. He was not a happy man. Um, trudging along, and next thing, all we, could, all we could hear was a really loud bipedal footstep. Um, probably just out of torch range from to our right and off the road. Um, crunching along as loud as you like. Uh, it wasn't a wallaby, you know, because they hop, jump, 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 jump like this. This was a crunch, 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 really loud, big footsteps. And um, and we're actually talking over it before I actually said, shut up for a second and uh, what are we hearing here? So we stopped and it stopped and then we started and it started and we stopped and it stopped. And it was playing a game with us. It was it was getting really, really silly. Um, we were scared. We were quite scared, but um, it was like, oh, we ended up, I ended up yelling out to it. I was going, yeah, like, you know, challenging it. All right, we know you're there. Who the fuck you are? Stop playing games. Who are you? What, what are you? Come here, you know. You're, getting, you're giving us the shit and you're really getting us scared. And I was even saying things like, I am, I have got a rifle. So if there's someone stick your head out now or I'll shoot it off even though I didn't have a rifle I was just you know it was getting to that stage where it was ridiculous um, and so I climbed up the bank you know and a road's kind of got a steep bank on one side I climbed up that and I stood on top of the bank and um, and this thing just stopped and I'm shining my torch and which was really really piss weak I wish I'd had a dolphin torch or something like that but I didn't um and I was moving the torch side to side, which is what you do when you're spotlighting, because if you move the light, it picks up different angles and different shadows, whereas if you just hold it still, whatever's at the end of the beam can stay still and blend into the shadows. So I was, I was doing a hunting trick with the light, and just as, just as I was about to give up, there was this movement, and, and as soon as it moved, the whole thing became visual to me. I could see the whole thing, and it was a really, Russety, um, I think that's the right word, Russ, like a, a reddish brown colour. Thick, thick, long fur, longer than a longer than a pig. Like, you know, have you ever seen a Highland coo, of the Scottish cows? Really that, shaggy things, yeah. Yeah, like that. That kind of reddish brown shaggy hair. Um, its head was, all there was was massive shoulders, massive shoulders, and then this round dome of a head. And, and it was behind, there was a big tree and a boulder, and it was behind the two of them. And once I saw it, it, it kind of clicked. It knew that I had it, and it moved. And that's when I could, you know, I could really see what it was. And I, I've gone, I've said out loud, you fucking, I can fucking see you. I can fucking see you now. Mm. But what are you? Stand up, stand up like that. Not a movement, not a movement. And my mates were going, come on, come down, come down. They were, they were worried about me. They go, come here. I'm like, I told them to shut up. And I just stayed there and I crouched down to about its level. Um, and and I could hear it breathing. The breathing was 
it's really strong, really obvious. Um, like an asthmatic wheeze, you know, it was that loud. Um, and I've gone, okay, I said out loud, okay, fine, you stay there, do, do your thing, but I can see you and I'm, I've, got your, I've got your number, right? Climbed back down the bank, said, come on, boys, let's, keep, let's just walk, there's nothing we can do. And they were saying, what did you see, what did you see? And I said, I don't want to tell you now. Let's, I'll, I'll tell you when I've got a hand on a cold beer and we're sitting around the fire. And um, so we kept walking. The footsteps kept, kept trudge, 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 trudge. The breathing kept breathing in and out. And we made sure that this Aboriginal guy was freaking, freaking out. He was like, he wanted to run. And I said, don't run. Don't worry, it's, it's stupid. You can, you know, this thing is huge. I just saw its shoulders. It's huge. Um, and then after about 10 minutes, exactly the opposite direction or from towards the way we were walking, another set of footsteps exactly the same started coming towards us. And before we knew it, there was two of them. Two sets of them. I don't know where this other, because I thought I knew this country really well. Some of it's quite open. Some of it's quite open country. Mm. Um, but these things, this thing came out of nowhere. Out of, out of bloody nowhere. Um, I got the impression that the second one was smaller. That the footsteps weren't so loud. Um, and the breathing wasn't so loud. But there was, it was definitely two of them. Um, and then, so we kept walking, kept walking. After a while, it became a bit of a joke and we were all yelling out to it. You know, yeah, good on your big foot, piss off, blah, blah, blah. It got to the stage where um, we started singing and whistling and stuff just to keep our spirits up. And about 10 minutes after that, I've realised that the footsteps had stopped and had gone altogether. And I've just gone to it. I've said to me, mates, hey, our friend, where's our friend? He's like, I'll be bugging. When did it go? I don't know. Did anyone hear it go? No. But no one heard it arrive either. It just, it was just there. It was just there. And I saw it and I'll never, ever forget. I mean, look, mate, I wouldn't be on the phone to you now, you know, and doing this if, 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 it, was, if it was bullshit. I don't bother bullshitting. Mm. Um, I'm pretty much straight down the line and I don't take drugs and I'm, you know, I'm, it's just, you know, I love the bush and I, I've seen everything now. As far as I'm concerned, I've seen it all, mate. And I, and I yeah. didn't want to believe in this, in this kind of thing, but it's there. It's, it's, it's too fucking true. Mm. Yep. Listen, you know, when you're walking, I guess, describe the country that you were going through on that second encounter. I mean, um, hey, um, dense bush. It's, uh, well, it's, it's, no, it's well, open sort of, you know, open sclerophyll forest, just open. Sclerophyll forest, it's, it's pretty open, you know, you know those black boy grass trees? Yeah. Right, there's a lot of that, and it's, the ground is mostly, like, you know, strewn leaves and sticks and stuff that have fallen off the gum trees, but it's pretty easy to walk through. Hmm. No, it's, um, it's, the trees aren't that, aren't that close together that you'd call it really thick. And uh, you, you, you're on a, a dirt road? We were on a dirt road, yeah, yeah. The, Do you know the name of the road? Uh, the name of the road, uh, no, but it, it goes from Wheat Jasper up to uh, Pheasant Creek Road, it's called, mm. um, and it's, uh, it's just, it, it winds through Wheat Jasper Station, which is a cattle property. Um, actually, it's just gone over, they've just taken it over to sheep, they're trying sheep on it now, but it goes through Wheat Jasper Station, uh, goes up around the mountain, um, and ends up at uh, Bucklug, the sign to Bucklug and Pheasant Creek Road, which is the back way to Tumut. It's pretty well used, it's a pretty well used road, mm. but it's very windy and small. And what exactly was the point along the road that you had the experience again? Can you? Oh, well, it was about, it was halfway between what's called the Rodeo Ground, um, and, which is a place where they have amenities, like it's got a toilet block on it and that, mm. just outside town. Halfway between the Rodeo Ground and the turn off to Bucklug State Forest. Um, I could take I could take you there right now because there's an old stone quarry where we got the blowout, and the blowout was right near the quarry, and that's right on the side of the road. Mm. Um, people get like their sandstone and stuff from there. Um, and yeah, I could I can see it in my mind right now. I've been past it probably 500 times in my life, and I'd, I could take you there blindfolded. It's, it's still right there. So you were. Uh yeah, describe, I guess, the country. Is it open? I mean, were you on the on a ridge or on the top of a? Um, no, it's, it was a, it was kind of. It's a really windy road, and it winds. It um, undulates around this around these mountains and gullies. On the left hand side, 
there's a really steep there's a really steep gully. It's quite steep and raviney, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, to the left, that's walking towards town. Um, and on the right, it's basically just a a, a bank that's been graded out. It gets, it gets graded every so often because the road's pretty harsh. Um, and uh, and on the right, it's just this bank, and then sort of sclerophyll forest and bushes and stuff that just kind of winds up and it goes up nice, nice gentle sort of slope. It's, um, yeah, it's easily traversed. It's good to hunt through because, you know, during the day you can see really, really easily through it. Um, and, and there's that much um, litter, leaf litter and sticks and stuff on the, on the ground that it's impossible to walk through it without making a noise. You know, like you can hear, you can hear something coming, especially this, because it weighed a ton. Um, you can hear it coming a long way away, you know, it's mm-hmm. like... So the, the, in the first part of the, that experience and the thing was close to you, about how far away do you think it was? I mean, was it just um, um, like roughly 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, maybe further, or hard to tell? Let me see. No, hang on. The only way I can do it is this room is 12 foot across. So um, it's pro- it was probably around about 30 feet away. Now, when you actually... St- Describe when you saw the thing. So you're on the road and it's upslope from you. Yeah, yeah. The, well, you know the you know the side of the side of the bank probably came up to my head. The bank on the side of the road. Yeah. You no, know, where there's kind of roots and things coming out of it, and just worn away by water and stuff. Um, yeah, actually, I actually had to kind of climb up to stand on the bank of the road, like yep. a river bank, you know, like that. And you were so you're above the other guys, and they. Yeah, I was see. above the other guys by about five or six foot. And they can't see him, and you're looking into the bush. Were you looking straight ahead to your left or to your right? I mean, at an angle or straight ahead? Straight towards where I figured this thing stopped. And as soon as I got up there, it stopped and crouched down. Oh, okay. So, we, but you said it was hiding behind a tree and some rocks. Yeah, a tree and one big rock. Because it's really, it's really rocky as well. This country is a lot of um, granite outcrops and caves, you know, and sort of little dolomite things and quartz. It's really rocky, quartzy country. So this was a big, big rock, and you were looking, what, between I mean, like the tree a, and the rock? Probably, you know, three foot, four foot tall boulder, right next to a tree. And it was between the two. It was, you know, at first I thought the rock was it. You know, this big sort of rock shape, I thought I'd have you. But then when it moved, and it all became apparent, the outline of the thing became all apparent, I didn't see its eyes, so it either had its eyes down, or, or turned away from the torchlight, but um, but its shoulder and its head, I definitely saw. Lee, I'll never forget the colour. So, what was the gap? How, how wide was the gap between the tree and the rock, roughly? Uh, probably a foot. Yeah. Okay, so the only glimpse you got of it was between the rock and the. No, it was actually ab- it was actually above the rock, between and above it. You know, it wasn't completely crouched down behind the rock. It was hunched down between the two. It, it wasn't like it was really hiding. It was kind of like it was peeking, you know? Oh, okay, so it was like peeking over the rock and with the tree sort of... Kind of looking around there. at me and... So when you looked over at it, just... just Okay, you, you shone the light yep. and you were looking at this spot and it wasn't moving. No, and, that's and, right. Until and, I moved the light itself, I was mo- moving the torch back and forward in a sort of swinging motion, you know what I mean? Yeah. To try and pick up different angles. Because when, you, when you're spotlighting... Sometimes there'll be something right there, and unless you move the torch, you won't actually catch its eyes. Mm. You just need that little bit of angle. It's called moment of angle, MOA. You just need that MOA, and once you've got it, then the whole thing becomes apparent. Like one of those invisible eye pictures, you know? That oh, yeah, 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 and no, I'm with you. No, no, it makes, it, makes, it makes a lot of sense what you're saying. Yeah. So you looked at it for what, a minute or two? I mean, you were just oh, shining at it? Easily, easily, probably maybe three minutes I stood there. And then you moved the light? Or you're moving the light all the time. Moving the light all the time, and yeah. then it and then it moved. Yeah, it moved probably about after about a minute it moved, and that's when I saw it when it became apparent. So what? Did, I mean, take me from when it moved. Where did it move, and how did it go out of the? I mean, how did you lose lose, lose sight of it, or I, what did it do? I, I I didn't. The torch was so weak that I once I saw it, I've gone okay, I've got you, and it just stayed there. It it didn't it didn't move after uh, when it initially moved. And I saw it, and I saw its shoulder and its shape of its head, and didn't have a neck. Um, I I saw it. Once I saw that, I've kind of I expected to kind of freak out, but I didn't. I've gone. Now I've got your number. I can see you, and I'm looking right at you, and it just 
stayed there, breathing. It didn't move. It was, it was like it was looking right at me and I was looking right at it. And it just stayed there and didn't move again. Once I said to it, I can see ya, it just stayed there. It, it, knew, I, it knew that I had its number and it just stayed there. And So w when it moved, did it, I mean, you said it was hunched over. Yeah. Did, it, did it stand up or did it, you know, you said it was crouched. Did it move up or like, how, how did it? It just stayed like that. So it was still in like a crouched, hunched over position? Yeah, I'm sure if it would have stood up, it would have been really, really big. Um, I mean, I'm six foot one myself, and this thing is, uh, this thing was like hunched over as it was, it still would have been close to my height, you know what I mean? Mm. It was like, well, probably would have made five ten, something like that. Um, and I, I just, you know... <laughs> Do you mean five ten hunched over or five ten total? No, five ten hunched over. Yeah. yeah. So when you say it moved, and you said you, you just take me through the things that you each of the things that you noticed when it moved, yeah. and, and then the impression that you got. Well, um, <laughs> when it moved, I it didn't it didn't disturb any sticks or anything. No, it didn't go crunchy, crunchy, crunch. Um, it just moved from okay, let's say I'm facing it, so it moved towards my left to go behind this tree a little more, just a little more. It was, it, if it wanted to, it could have crouched lower and gone invisible, you know, I wouldn't have seen it at all. Um, and I was, about, I was about to walk over closer too, but once I saw it, I was not going any closer. Um, it, it just moved to my left um, and it remained perfectly motionless, except for its breathing, um, which kind of gave the illusion of, mo of motion, you know. Um, its it, it shoulders weren't going up and down as it breathed, but I got the impression of its chest sort of moving, or the hair on it at least, was kind of moving like a like a leaf on a tree would move. So you actually, when you caught it, in the, when you went back you were looking at it again, were you looking at it front on? Oh, face to face, front on. At a distance of, what, you said 30 feet? 30 feet. Like Sorry? Yep. About 30, okay. About 30 feet, yeah. And so before you hadn't had it in, you hadn't got an image of it, but, but so this was, was it, it was quite well illuminated, or was it, I mean, this was, you're saying it was a weak it torch? Not, it was not well illuminated. It yeah. was um, a really piss weak torch, I must admit. So it was more silhouette or, or hey? more like a silhouette than a... Um, well, it was just, a, it was right at the end of the beam, at the very limit of this piss weak torch, that was the 30 foot limit, and that's where it was. If this thing had moved back another 10 feet, it would have been in pitch darkness. And if it had moved forward another 10 feet, it would have been in really good light. But it was just on that wishy-washy kind of where the light, light is fading. Um, I didn't even, you know, it wasn't, it's not a hunting torch, it was just a little shitty little kind of kitchen drawer torch, you know? Mm. Yeah, it was a, a piss weak thing. Um, and, it was, and its batteries were on the way out. So it was just enough to make out, you know, basically a point. We were using it to point at the ground so we didn't trip over any major rocks. But that was um, that was about its limit, you know. Um, it was, but it was it was it was bright enough for me to see the colour of the thing and the size of the thing because I could make out the rock, the lichen on the rock. I could make out the tree, and the it was a bloodwood, and it had that you know streaks of sap coming down it. Yeah. I could make that out and the colour of it. That's why when this thing moved, it became so apparent that I could I could sort out the whole shape of the thing and the colour of its fur and the the shape of it's a real domey, domey head like it. Like when you see a big bloke with his head shaved, that kind of look, but it was hairy. You know, a real dome, a, a really egg-shaped head. Um, high forehead, hunched shoulders, massive. Uh, the shoulders on it were, were as thick as my, the, my thighs, you know? Like, as, even even bigger. As, as big as... Pff, make Arnold Schwarzenegger look like a, look, look a whip. Really? Like, yeah. Did you see arms on it? No, I didn't see its arms. Its arms were down, like in front of it. Um, uh, so, and they were so they were a little bit hidden by this rock and that. But the, but its shoulders and its neck were, were clearly visible. Like mm. shoulders, neck, and head. I just couldn't. I wish I'd seen its eyes because it must have had its eyes not closed but averted slightly, just enough so that the torchlight couldn't pick it up. Because um, its face was indistinguishable. I couldn't actually make out any facial features apart from the shape of its head and jaw. But the shoulder and the top part, the bottom part of its neck or chest, I should say, 
top part of its chest and its and its left shoulder were really easy to see because it was such a reddish brown colour against the grey of the rock. Um, real, a colour that you don't see much in the wild. That was the thing that got me. Um, there's a part of a red kangaroo which you don't get up there. Um, there's nothing really that would that would equate that colour. Not in my book, and my book's pretty thick. Um, even wild pigs, wild dogs, you don't even see them that colour. It was a really, it was like a chestnut, a chestnut colour, thick, long chestnut, like a Highland cow. So you said that, like, this wasn't short hair like a dog or short hair like a bear? No, no, it was, it was long hair, thick, long hair. Would you say it was shaggy or yeah, neat would, or? Yeah, I would say it was shaggy. It was, um, it was laying all in one direction, if, if you know what I mean. Like, um, like a, I don't know, like an animal would if it was, you know, like brushed its hair down. Um, but it was by no means sleek, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It was, um, it was, it was in, not dreadlocks, but it was in chunks. It was, the, the hair was thick, like you'd imagine, not like a bear or, or, or something with long hair that lives out in the bush. You know, I mean, the, its hair was matted. It was matted and, and thick, but not, not filthy. And the other thing was there was no smell. And I've often heard from people um, that this thing is preceded by an unholy smell. There was no smell at all. Nothing. Mm. Um, all I could smell was the eucalyptus and, you know, the, the ground around me. Um, so... No smell. Okay, so you said you saw a neck, but not much of a neck, or was it... Was it well, basically the junction of the head um, to between the shoulders, it, that's what I'm calling a neck. But it really wasn't... There wasn't one there. If you, you know how when you shrug, if you really shrug as much as you can shrug and put your chin down onto your chest to make it look like you've got no neck, well, that's how this thing looked. Like a, like a big person shrugging. Um, you, you know what I mean, Paul? Yeah, yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. That's, yeah. that's the best way I can describe it. And I, and I got the impression that even if the thing had stood up, it would still be it would still have that physical attribute there was, there was no neck like a like a hopawati or some big bloody free player yeah um that kind of no neck bouncer kind of you know chrome magnum look mm. in fact in fact when i say chrome magnum um that's for me that's a good way of describing it because it really did have a a caveman type of appearance to it um a pre pre um homo erectus kind of look to it so you got the sense that this was more person-like than animal-like you know more human-like than animal-like or, or can't make a call i have i have tried to work that out that's a very very hard question to answer mm. difficult um, to tell on the basis of what you saw i guess well it's definitely bipedal so that puts it for me in a more of a, a, a human category mm. but the uh, oh, okay, I, I would say 51% yeah, more human. It's that close. Mm. This, the, um, all in all, let's say, how long did you have it actually in view for before you turned around and yeah, came back probably down? probably three minutes, mate. Mm. Which is quite a long time. I mean, in my book it is anyway, because considering that the walk, when it was following us, step by step, mile after mile, uh, it was probably with us for best part of three or four hours that's how long the walk took and that's how long it stayed with us for it, it, is that the initial part for the second one turn up or are you talking about the whole incident yeah the whole incident yeah yeah the whole thing it was with us for that long and and between those between me seeing it and either side of it walking on let's say let's say it was with us for two hours then i challenged it saw it had it at the end of the line said to me mate so i can see it um, I said to it, I can see you, came back down the bank, continued our walk, and it was with us for another two hours after that. So, and then it was joined at the end of that two hours, there was probably about half an hour where it was joined by a second big, trudging, hairy fucking thing. So if that was, if the second thing joined coming from the opposite direction, I mean, you guys just continued going down the track past where the second one came up, or? Yeah, well, there was only one way to go. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, um... We had no campsite up the mountain and we knew that uh, down the hill was our mate in the van uh, who by this time, by this time um, had lit a fire and, and gotten everything ready for us and put the billy on and uh, we knew there was only one way to go and there was three of us and 
apart from the Aboriginal bloke who's a pretty scrawny bloke, me and me mate can you know, we pretty much look after ourselves. I had a, I had a decent hunting knife on me, and the, the other thing was that I knew the country really, really well. Um, and I thought, I know the country, this country, like the back of my hand, if, if needs be, we can always cut down this side gully here and go across, and there's a farmhouse only about an hour across that hill, you know? Yeah. I, I, I wasn't scared at this stage. The thing was as well, that the biggest thing, the guy I was with, was the bloke I was with in Mount Warning a few years before that, 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 and we were laughing, we are just going, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Here we are together again, and we're having this experience. His name's Furry, Brian McLean. I'm just going, Furry, this is weird. Now this thing either knows who it can show itself to, because it can sense an open mind, or it can sense um, something, an, an, a willingness to, you know, some sort of open door. Do you know what I mean? There's like some sort of spiritual link. I don't think this thing. Now, don't get me wrong here, because I'm not a, I'm not a hippie or anything. But not that that's a bad thing. Um, but I don't think this thing is entirely solid. Mm. I think that this thing can, can if it wishes to be seen, can be seen, and if it wishes not to be seen, then it won't be seen, and I also believe that it has some way of travelling between worlds. What makes you think that? Because I don't know. I don't know, Paul. Mm. Something inside me, I'm, a, I'm an instinctive person, um, I had a really strange upbringing, um, as far as spiritual stuff goes, um, and I was always taught that we have six senses, not five, and had many an argument at school with my teachers about the same thing. Um, I just think that the size of this thing and the, the amount of sightings and stuff that there is, and, and the fact that man is encroaching further and further and further into the wilds, that, I mean, come on, that someone must have bagged one by now. Yeah, it's a, it's, that's... Look, uh, even a, a fur sample? You're telling me no one's got a handful of fur yet? Yeah, no, interesting point. Yeah, we all, we all kind of struggle with that. <laughs>